Hi, let's talk about your esophagus or the intended pathway for food to proceed through to the digestive system. The esophagus is a fibromuscular tube that's going to connect the pharynx to the stomach. It's going to move through the neck and the thorax down into the abdomen. Now, generally, we would divide the esophagus into cervical portions in the neck, thoracic portions in the thorax, and a tiny little abdominal portion in the abdomen. But it might be easier uh, functionally to think of the esophagus as an upper third and a lower two thirds. That upper third of the esophagus, uh, and that would be the cervical portion of the esophagus, located there, is unique in that it consists of largely striated or skeletal muscle. The striated muscle, though, is not voluntary. It's, it's under the control of the autonomic nervous system, and it's going to activate during swallowing or the deglutition reflex. This upper third is innervated by the recurrent laryngeal nerves, which are branches of the vagus nerve, and they're supplied by blood by the inferior thyroid arteries. Now beyond that upper third, the lower two thirds of the esophagus are really imbued with smooth muscle. And that smooth muscle is under control of the esophageal plexus. The esophageal plexus consists of contributions from the vagal trunk and various branches of the thoracic sympathetic trunk. And this portion of the esophagus is supplied by blood via the esophageal arteries and other branches, such as the left gastric artery and the left inferior phrenic artery. So anatomically, there are three portions to the esophagus. There's the cervical part of the esophagus, which is going to conduct materials or a bolus uh, down through the neck. And then there's the thoracic part of the esophagus that begins at the root of the neck and is then going to extend down to the diaphragm, and it's going to pierce the diaphragm at the esophageal hiatus, which at rest is uh, approximately at the level of T10, or the 10th thoracic vertebra. And then there's the abdominal portion of the esophagus, which is beyond the diaphragm and is adjacent to the cardia of the stomach. Now let's take a look at each part of the esophagus in greater detail. So here we're looking at a posterior view of the pharynx, and you can see that here. As it transitions into the cervical part of the esophagus here. That cervical part of the esophagus is largely striated or skeletal muscle that's under control of the recurrent laryngeal nerves, which are branches of the vagus. Here we can see the, uh, the first part of the subclavian artery giving rise to the thoracic trunk. Uh, the thoracic trunk has a branch called the inferior thyroid artery, and those inferior thyroid arteries are going to send branches out to supply the cervical esophagus with blood. The thoracic esophagus is going to conduct those boli of food down or across the superior mediastinum and then the posterior mediastinum. And it's going to be nestled between the thoracic part of the descending aorta, which we can see here, and the inferior vena cava, which would be here but is been removed in this particular dissection. Now the esophageal plexus that controls the thoracic portion of the esophagus consists of contributions of the anterior vagal trunk. The anterior vagal trunk gets most of its supply from the left vagus nerve. It also has some branches from the right. So we can see the, the left vagus nerve coming down here and supplying the anterior esophageal plexus, but there are also a couple of branches descending from the right. There's also a posterior vagal trunk that is predominantly 
from the, the right vagus nerve and also has some branches from the left. Now we can see some of those portions of the esophageal plexus showing up as fine scale branches just on this anterior portion of the esophagus. In terms of blood flow, the thoracic portion of the esophagus gets branches from the thoracic part of the descending aorta or the thoracic aorta here. So there are esophageal arteries. Now this part of the esophagus ends at T10 as it is transmitted through the esophageal hiatus of the diaphragm. The final and smallest or shortest part of the esophagus is the abdominal part. And we can see the abdominal part of the esophagus here deviating left into the stomach, which we can see here. It is contiguous with the cardia or the cardiac region of the stomach. And we can see the anterior vagal trunk uh, there. And this abdominal part of the esophagus continues to receive innervation from the vagal trunks, and it gets its blood flow um, largely from the left inferior phrenic artery, the left gastric artery, and any continuations of esophageal arteries from the thorax. So materials, um, and at this point we would refer to them as boli, singular bolus, are conducted from the esophagus into the stomach. And it's here that we're going to have quite a bit of intensive chemical digestion, and we're going to begin the processes of absorption. Thank you.